Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about X-ray communication. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand why the heck we wanna bother with X-ray. The biggest issue you have to understand is limitation of bandwidth. Basically, how many gigabytes you can send per second. That is directly proportional to the frequency of the thing you are using. So radio is basically better in certain regards, but it has lower bandwidth. Now IR is uh, better in some regard, but it also has lower bandwidth compared to X-ray. So that is the whole point. Compared to X-ray, these two have less bandwidth, not against like each other. Like they each have their advantage. Like radio is generally omnidirectional. So in this sort of scenario, you have to understand it is posing a limitation to our current space exploration. Now, now range is a very critical aspect. Basically, the furthest thing we have sent so far is Voyager probes. And one of those probes is so far that if you are, even if you are traveling at light speed, it will take you 19 light hours to get there. That's how far it is. To give you a context, sun is barely 8 minutes. So the fact that at that distance communicating using radio or even infrared is not feasible flat out and uh, on top of that let's say when you are going through this distance the vacuum is not vacuum at that point you have dust cloud you have other things and a lot of things going on so it is very easily blocked and interfered with now interference becomes a very particular issue when you are talking about re-entry vehicles basically anything that will re-enter a planet's atmosphere at high speed like uh, in case of earth in case of mars or in case of titan so when you are talking about those sort of scenarios when it's re-entering you will lose communication now that may not be issue because again we have been successfully doing it but you would rather want to have communication so you can uh, properly receive the telemetry data so in this sort of scenario the fact that it is easily blocked and uh, interfered with we really want something that can handle this sort of situation and power consumption of radio waves and IR is very high and uh, it gets higher and higher as you go further and further so why x-ray Again, it's very simple about uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Basically, the higher the frequency, the more data you can send. So you will get uh, basically more data in microwave, uh, basically compared to ra long radio waves, the old radio system we used to use. The, and then in infrared, you're going to get even higher bandwidth than microwave. Then why don't we use optical spectrum? Yes, some company have tried that, but optical spectrum simply means you can see it. You really don't want to see that. So uh, people have tried ultraviolet, which has some success, but X-ray is very powerful. Now, when you are talking about uh, X-ray, then you might be like, why not? St uh, why just stop at X-ray? Why not go to gamma rays? Well, low lethality of X-ray is very interesting to us. Now, all these things are lethal. Basically, if you have a lot of microwave, you will be cooked to death. If you have a lot of uh, basically wrong radio wave, you will be damaged. And if you have a lot of infrared, again, you will be boiled to death. So all of these are dangerous. It's directly proportional to how much energy you have. Ideally, you want something that can pass through you without dumping energy into you. X-ray can do that. That's why we are not going in ultraviolet because ultraviolet will not go through you very clearly radio wave can go through you very quickly but uh, in this side x-ray can but while it's doing that it will impart some energy on you that's how we get x-rays but it is not lethal like it's not gonna kill you instantaneously of course uh, if you are exposed to x-ray for very long time and very large intensity these uh, these intensities are very higher what we are talking about in terms of communication it will be much less so in this scenario it is very low lethality it's not gonna kill you instantaneously and it has very high uh, like highest uh, hertz that we can even think of to give you a rough context you are talking about eight uh, 10 to the power 18 that many hertz that's a, that's like 18 zero so it's a ludicrously fast if we can uh, send even one second of it like one second of signal went through you will send a lot of data with that now it's unblockable now this is very crucial uh, that given the fact let's say many times you are sending a zero and something else uh, comes between your receiver and you like let's say in case of uh, you are sending signal to something very far or something high altitude aka let's say jewish stationing what about space debris coming into you what about other satellite going through x-ray cannot be stopped x-ray will simply go through you without uh, causing too much damage and the range now this is the lovely part this is not the interesting part for uh, earthbound application but this is very crucial because once you start talking about going to let's say as far as mars uh, the radio communication becomes really 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 dodgy and you are talking about let's say going as far as pluto flat out even sending one image file not a, like you know 100 gigabyte file one image file could take upwards of one week to year so that's under, understanding. At those ranges, X-ray is like, yeah, I got this, I got this. That is why we want the bandwidth to be so high. So even if we can send only one second of it, yeah, it, it can carry like whole image file directly. Just take it and go. So that is why we want to use X-ray. It can pass through us without, you know, seriously destroying us. And it's uh, flat out invisible, unblockable, and range-wise is pretty awesome. 
Now that itself is not the core reason why we are choosing X-ray. It's simply because it also allows us to make what we classify as space GPS. Now what is that? Basically there are many types of star. You have blue star, you have yellow star, you have red star and you also have other fancy type of star like black hole and pulsar. Now pulsar is very interesting because it's a more or less nature's uh, lighthouse. It spins. So if it has a beam, basically the magnetic field is so confined that it creates a beam. Now that beam is very bright in X-ray. Now that uh, because it's spinning it's never it's gonna be like okay okay I'm looking at you it's not a constant it's not like a star where it's constant you it's like going back and forth back and forth back and forth so from your point of view you'll be like you will get this now using that uh, somebody has theorized that what if we can make a basically a space based GPS system it does work basically it's, and it's a galaxy level basically every galaxy have hundreds of pulsar so if you know even pulse, few pulsar you can make a GPS system because you have to understand GPS works on only four satellites pulsar you can have at any moment in time any part of the sky you can have as high as 18 pulsar so that's very high precision and this because they are spinning and their signal is not like constant they also have an inherent frequency to itself now that allows us something interesting that allows us time keeping now time keeping is not very uh, is like very big issue when you're talking about gps satellite or iss but it is an issue when you send something let's say very far as uh, far apart let's say in case of voyager pro problem with that is like time dilation starts to play a role not by speed but by, by the very fact that you are away from gravity well of earth you are away from the gravity well of sun as further away you go now it will only shift your clock by a few milliseconds not even few milliseconds like few nanosecond or femtosecond but it is more than enough to disrupt radio communication using this using basically pulsar you can calibrate your signal basically uh, from earth you will look at hey this is 50 hertz uh, so from your side you're gonna look at it and it's like it's coming at 46 you're like no 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 this is supposed to be 50 you're gonna uh, calibrate your clock so this is very useful for very long range and this device has been in test uh, in ISS for uh, around 2014 I've provided the uh, NASA link down below you can read the description there and it's size of a basically big washing machine it's not very big it's just a washing machine so this acts as a very good GP, uh, GPS for space now what are the uses of it think of it this way if we had this during Apollo era and when we have sent the Apollo crew basically computer was constantly making <laughs> As it's getting closer because it's using the visual feedback basically it's was it relying on optical this is much more precise than that does that mean if we had this we never had to do course correction no you simply had to do few course correction it's like let's say it's like driving with a GPS without GPS can you drive yes absolutely but with GPS you have to do less course correction same goes with here that's why we want to utilize x-ray we'll gonna like you know kill two birds with one stone communication and navigation and timekeeping also so this demonstration that I'm talking about it is a very uh, very very uh, early stage basically this is uh, one of those hypothetical this is one of those like let's see what happens it's not like okay this is what we're gonna do this is where we're gonna install it no it's not a demonstration project it's basically a test a test of concept but again it's in uh, ISS that's why people are classifying as as basically demonstration project so it is one way this is critical aspect that uh, GPS receiver that pulsar GPS receiver that we have it's classified as N I C E R N C R. it's already there so it will act as a receiver so the transmitter is the what we are sending up the NCR will act as a receiver now you might be like doesn't that mean the communication is one way yes it is that's why I'm saying it's not even a full-fledged data communication hoo-ha we are simply doing this as proof of concept can we do it can we actually pull it off what happens in space because you have to understand our atmosphere protects us from a lot of x-rays also so when you are talking about sun uh, sun is not very bright in x-ray but it is bright it is still like visible in x-ray spectrum so how will it interfere so that is why we're gonna use NCR uh, N I C E R as a receiver and we're gonna have XCOM uh, as a basically transmitter so it's a one way basically this is gonna send the signal and uh, this puppy will receive it now the distance between them is not very far apart it's, if you want to understand it it's just uh, American football in a like in terms of width now the core reason what they really want to prove as in like okay it does work is that further you go the uh, basically the energy efficiency becomes a much more paramount basically at a distance from let's say earth to moon it's not gonna make that much but earth to mars yeah you're gonna save energy now in terms of earth to pluto radio will consume let's say a few kilowatts this will co consume uh, one kilowatt so that is the core reason that is why they are doing the demonstration 
but there is a dark side to this uh, whole thing now when i say dark side i'm not trying to be sensitive it's just you have to understand this is not for peaceful purposes this is a weapons technology the core reason it's being developed is that uh, military uh, all around the world basically from china india to uh, russia to usa they are all reaching in the territory of what we classify as hypersonic flight now icbms have been already doing it now this technology is god sent for icbm imagine you have an icbm and you are usa and somebody blows up your gps system how the heck can you fire an icbm can you fire it on inertial guidance system yes it's good enough, but it's not very precise so how do you make sure that whatever icbm you still have functioning left you can you want to make sure that it's very precise now once it goes to space basically once it's outside of atmosphere which will be like barely few minutes then it can utilize that space gps basically natural uh, gps and be much more precise compared to an inertial navigation system that is already there so using all these systems if gps is working awesome if they're not working no problem i already have inertial guidance system now inertial guidance system plus uh, nature based gps then you are talking about something very precise you don't even have to think about gps system so this is a dream technology for icbm now there is another aspect of it when icbm enters it's basically doing re-entry so you really want to maintain communication to the it for why uh, well a it could allow you to redirect it could allow you to abort or it could allow you to guide properly basically let's say you detect something icbm is falling somewhere and you have a feedback that there is a plane that has a radar and it's a, you want to have a stealth attack and you detect the plane change the path now you can send the icbm somewhere else because even it has some uh, basically some level of control it can guide itself to where it wants to fall now during re-entry you can't communicate that data but you can only act on that period so having x-ray you can simply dodge it basically hey this is an airborne plane there that will detect you let's go this direction you only have to send it like command like change the angle to five degree and it's like it's gonna go somewhere else so this sort of uh, tactical advantage is like uh, it will make uh, basically army general clean their pants so this is the dark side of it and hypersonic flight needs this because once you are talking about some uh, uh, vehicle craft like x43 it can only reach to like some mark 5 plus these puppies are supposed to reach my, my upwards of mark 10 like that is the target mark 10 is the target so once they reach at that speed they are creating their own plasma now you, the plasma is not very bright you can't see it like okay there is a plasma streak and that will defeat the purpose uh, it will be like seeing a shooting star going by so uh, it the plasma is not very visible but it's still there and it still causes very serious interference in terms of radio so they want to use this because it becomes at that point at hypersonic speed it's not a, like uh, we should have this it you have to have this to have proper control proper guidance so that is why it's getting a lot of army funding that is the core reason why it's happening not like uh, okay we're gonna do something that will allow us to communicate very far no somebody told uh, army is like hey hypersonic control guided missile they are like okay here's your money take your money and go so this is the dark side you have to be aware this is not something that i can simply say it's only for civilian purposes or peaceful purposes this is primary as a weapons system so this was my presentation on x-ray communication i hope you liked it learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike i would urge you to press this twice to show me your extra disappointment and i would ask you to leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching